There is an idea that almost no one outside of its specialist academic habitat actually believes in. And yet, within that field, it is the established and reigning orthodoxy. It is an idea which has provoked some of the most fervent and vociferous of opposition. Its opponents can be secular or theological, conservative or radical. Often, it is the only thing which its opponents despise more than they do each other. What is this idea? It is the idea commonly known as physicalism. Physicalism is the claim that everything in the mind is part of the physical world. Every mental state, like belief or desire, every mental event, like thought or sensation, every mental process, like memory or reason, are all ultimately no different to any other physical event, state or process. Things in the mind take their natural place alongside the things typically studied by physicists, chemists and biologists. Psychology is a physical science, one that need not talk about souls, supernatural forces or magic. <laughs> The appeal of physicalism grew as a result of the Enlightenment, more specifically the consequent practical benefits that accrued during the Industrial Revolution and modern age. At each turn of the flywheel, flip of the switch or effective application of physical medicine, physicalism, though not actually proven, acquired greater plausibility. Eventually, the practical payoffs of physical technology became so ubiquitous in industrialized societies as to make the out-and-out -out denial of physicalism seem perverse, at least in intellectual circles. These economic and technological factors, along with a widespread reliance on pragmatic criteria for proof, have proven influential in giving the most common argument for physicalism its present form. Firstly, it is claimed that physical explanations provide the best explanations of mental states, events and processes. An explanation is considered the best explanation when it has four virtues. Firstly, it provides accurate prediction. What it says will happen, happens. Secondly, it provides comprehensive explanation. There is a place in it for everything that needs to be explained and everything that needs to be explained has a place in it. Thirdly, it provides efficient explanation. It explains the largest number of things using the smallest number of other things without of course explaining anything away. Fourthly, it supports the broadest range of counterfactuals. That is, it explains not only what indeed did happen, but what would have happened had circumstances been different. The first claim, therefore, is that physical explanations provide the most accurate, comprehensive, efficient and broadest explanations of mental things. The second claim is that good explanations are like good maps. They are, provided we are familiar and compliant with the rules of their use, accurate. Being accurate, they enable us to successfully navigate, and it is their ability to do so which is the best evidence of their accuracy. 
The third claim is that the assertion that mental things are physical things is, like any assertion, either true or false. And yet physicalism is a necessary condition for any physical explanation. Because if the mind wasn't part of the physical world, there wouldn't really be any point in trying to explain it in physical terms. However, if physicalism were false, it is extremely unlikely that physical explanations would be the best explanations, that they would fulfill all the criteria that we met in the first claim. However, given the first claim, it is therefore extremely unlikely that physicalism is false. And physicalism, or claim of physicalism, being either true or false, it is therefore extremely likely that physicalism is true. The principle is that physical explanations are like accurate maps. They successfully help us to find our way. We encounter the majority of landmarks and boundaries predicted, and even though there is still plenty of unfamiliar territory, they continue to guide us back onto more familiar ground. In this way, by following their instructions, we get to where we want to go and have thus proven key to a whole host of beneficial technologies. Ultimately, this is why physicalism is so widely accepted. Because if human nature consists in the mind, and the mind is best understood in physical terms, then as our physical understanding matures, as it arguably is now, there comes a revolution in self-understanding. Frankly, that revolution might not have come a moment too soon. Because our relationships are perilous. Not only our relationships with our fellow human beings, but also our relationships with the physical, natural world itself.